we're going to hear from Theo Williams. Theo is the co-founder of Localised from Geelong and Kyneton in Victoria. Theo is passionate about his regional community and wants Kyneton and all regional towns, towns and cities to become great places to live and work. Um, Theo is building new digital infrastructure to help organisations in regal, regional economies discover and work with other local businesses. Theo is a loving dad, an experimenter, a placer of bets and a lifelong learner and someone who loves to put the ideas to the test. Theo is not afraid to fail. Welcome, Theo. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Eleanor and the uh, um, awesome festival that this is. Um, I drove a long way this morning from Kyneton to come here. Um, and I wanted to start with a story I was reading my boy the other night. Oh, the places you could go. You won't lag behind because you'll have speed. You'll pass the whole gang. You'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Go Simone with Shrimper. Um, so I just want to ask a few questions to get a feel for the room. Um, how many people here are a small business owner? Hands up high, I'm pretty sure. Um, how many people here work for a corporate? Yep, or a government organization? Yep. Um, how many people are from Gippsland, live and work here? Okay, awesome. Um, how many people drove in um, in this coming here today, on this now sunny day? Okay. I mean, I, I ask some of those questions because I'm really passionate about regional economies and I think they are amazing places to live and work and there is a trend for professionals and um, folks to, who are choosing to move to places like Tarragon and Clinton, where I'm from, Bendigo, um, all across Victoria and Australia um, because of their lifestyle. But um, starting a small business, running a small business and working from regional economies can be challenging because sometimes you will fail. Um, uh, sometimes you won't fly and other people will all around you and especially in the startup scene, I have a startup, um, you keep reading all these awesome stories around, you know, you know, someone sold for X amount of millions of dollars or, you know, someone's got a million new customers and all these positive stories. Um, but what's also exciting is an increased uh, appetite for talking about failure, learning and, you know, the grind. So I used to be an agile consultant uh, and, and really encourage them to embrace failure and uh, coming from you know, the son of an educator, working in universities, um, I really love that concept of the scientific model, you know, uh, um, experimenting, learning and just keep going. Um, apart from Anthony's awesome introduction of me, I um, moved to Kyneton primarily for family. Um, I'm really passionate about having experiences. You know, as a younger person, travelled a lot. Um, not afraid to put myself out there and take risks. You know, as a kid it was jumping off things, but now as an adult it's starting a business. Um, and I'm really passionate about people. So it's an awesome opportunity to come and meet with all of you guys. Um, to learn about your businesses hopefully over the lunch. Um, and in the last six months or a year, I have been talking to a lot of small businesses, a lot of uh, government and private organisations, and just learning how the economy ticks. Uh, so it's been a really fun journey. Um, I started, I kind of fell into my career. I came back from travelling and a mate gave me a job at Deakin University. Um, I also then worked at Monash University. You could probably tell by the corduroy jacket. Um, I then moved into um, more corporate stuff deliberately. I wanted to you know, um, wear more suits, I guess, I thought. Um, hence that horrible slide. It's uh, Google Images, thank you Google Images. Um, but uh, it was quickly pretty boring to me, like the rate of um, change was very slow. I wasn't able to really have a, a, a big impact, I wasn't able to make changes quickly. Just you know, making a change on the websites that I was managing took two or three people to approve it, and so that really pissed me off. Um, then, 
before I started local or co-founded Localized, I moved to Kyneton. It's a small town. It's in um, the Macedon Ranges Shire, which is you know, not too dissimilar from some of the shires around here. It's quite geographically diverse. It's got a couple of awesome towns within a particular municipality. Um, Kyneton is probably the more country one. There's a tractor that goes down my street, dragging a trailer full of potatoes. My son loves that. Um, and then there's Wood End, which is full of a lot of very wealthy people that commute to Melbourne, and Gisborne, which is almost a suburb of Melbourne. Um, but it's quite diverse. Um, that's my favourite pub in Kyneton. Um, I do business from there, um, which is great. And I commuted to Melbourne from Kyneton for about a year and a half, and I made an incredible bunch of friends and social network from the people on that train. A lot of people just like me, traveling into Melbourne to work in corporates. Um, and I saw a real opportunity to, um, for a lot of those people who are living in the town that I was, had a very similar story to me, had moved from Melbourne, young family, um, that you know, they could start businesses. The Simone story before around um, being able to kind of sell and run a business from a regional town, like that two-way street is real. Um, and with things like the NBN and Telstra and Auspost, those, uh, that, that infrastructure needed is, is just is here or will be here tomorrow. Um, then the Startup Muster came in. If you haven't read the Startup Muster report, it's a, it's a really awesome read. It's um, very visual, which helps. You can kind of scan it and take in a lot very quickly. Um, when I read it, I got really disappointed because I just started my um, started localized, and I saw common stats around um, entrepreneurs. They were from professional background, were between 35 and 40, were male, and pretty much white, and so like that was me. And I thought, oh, it's a bit of a shame. I like to stand out, but um, it also kind of gave me a bit of confidence. Like, yeah, why not? Why why can't I just do this? So um, it's a great report. I encourage you to read it. So lo I'll tell you a bit about Localize. It's a tech startup. Uh, we've been operating for a year. We've been in market since January, um, primarily in the Bendigo and Geelong region. We launched in Ballarat yesterday. Um, and where I'd like to talk to small businesses, shires, and corporates, and any business, really, an organization from this region as well. Um, my team there, we're, we're all regionally based. You know, we live in Geelong, Kyneton or Port Ferry. We're all regionally focused. You know, we all have families in those towns. Um, we're regionally funded. We, we have private equity from uh, regional angel investors. Um, and so we have a real passion for you know, places that we work and live. Uh, James Baird on the right, my left. <coughs> he, um, we, we started uh, another platform called Pundit Connect, horrible name, um, and it was operating in Geelong for a long time, uh, so not a long time, for about a year. Um, and what we learned from that was there was a real passion for businesses to work locally. It was a professional services marketplace. You know, if you needed legal advice or a solicitor or a website built, you could post a project and you could get quotes. Um, it, it wasn't that successful um, in terms of, I guess, financial value, but in terms of the learnings, incredibly valuable. So after Startup Victoria, we, we, James did a pitch at Startup Victoria and won that, and it, it kind of funded our pivot into localized. So we kind of hit the starting line again. And that was August last year. Um, and then it took us three months to build a new platform. Uh, Building a platform always takes a long time. I think Simone mentioned it's taken her th two years to, to get Shrimper to, you know, right at the starting line. Um, and so, but it was enough, of, enough to get us to market. So we were able to um, start talking to customers. So when we launched Localized in January this year, we were just in Bendigo, and I did lots of tours to manufacturing um, businesses, to the council, to lots of digital small businesses, um, to try and encourage them to sign up to Localized on a promise. Um, it was incredible learning. 
Like being able to go to all those different workplaces um, and see what um, those buyers or procurers, procurement managers, economic development folks, um, and on the flip side of that marketplace, small businesses, what, what they wanted and how they like to do business, incredible learning. Um, and we just relaunched Localize, we rebuilt the app. So we, we hit the starting line again last week. So I, don't, I may never actually leave the starting line. Um, Localized is a digital platform that is, I guess, an economic development tool if, when I'm talking to councils and government, but it's also a lead generator for small business. Uh, we have uh, over 700 businesses in Localized, and there's been over uh, $100,000 worth of, pro uh, more than that, over $120 million worth of projects that have been posted through Localized across Geelong, Bendigo, and we've posted some here in Gippsland. So we really want to create visibility of local businesses. Um, there, there is uh, both a perceived and a real challenge for businesses in regional economies, and that is around visibility. Um, you don't know who's in your backyard, especially in this digital economy where new businesses are starting all the time. People are starting new businesses, moving from um, metropolitan areas into these townships, starting businesses. Um, a Google search isn't going to reveal what capabilities you offer. You might, if, if you're lucky, you, you definitely will get some business through your website and through Google search rankings, um, but nothing that's hyper-local. This here is an example. Um, in the Geelong or the G21 Bowen region, uh, there's $18 billion worth of discretionary procurement. Over half of that is leaking out of the economy. Uh, and so with a partnership with um, Give Where You Live and Grow, a social enterprise there, um, we're, we've partnered with them to try and chip away at that. Um, and if we can keep a billion dollars of that from leaking out of the Geelong economy, that's like two and a half thousand jobs, to use government speak. Um, it's a significant impact if we can keep more of those dollars in Geelong. And that's the same in any regional economy. Uh, so last week we relaunched Localize. It's got a dynamic map, so you can search for businesses. You can also search for projects. Um, as a supplier or a, of goods and services, um, you can get unlimited leads. Uh, you can um, make contact with and build relationships with procurement, procurers. Um, and business owners. Uh, we've got very flexible buying tools, so you don't necessarily have to go to market to get quotes. You can just post a need. Like, I'm looking for someone who can help me with um, Google Analytics. That's actually a, a real problem I have. So if anyone here does Google Analytics, I need to talk to you at lunchtime um, <laughs> and maybe buy you dinner tonight or a beer, whatever. Um, or you could, if you're a council and you've got a tendering platform, just let locals know. So post your procurement in advance. Ideally, future procurement is fantastic. If you know you're going to go to market for some work in three, six, or 12 months' time, let local businesses know. Um, and I will amplify that message so local businesses have more time to build capacity, have more time to, build, uh, to be compliant, potentially partner and do co-ventures. Um, be the successful tender. I'm not saying you have to apply local content weighting, but if you give local businesses a chance, then you'll be surprised at how awesome they can be. And also as a supplier, um, you can advertise your goods and services um, and your cap capacity to deliver. Um, as someone looking to, you know, a business to build me a website or to um, you know, asphalt some roads, I can, um, there are certain metrics that I'm looking for or there's certain capabilities that I'm looking for and there's, I need to have confidence that, that that business is going to be able to deliver my project at a certain capacity. So that's um, something else that Localize can do for your business. Um, there's some examples of some projects. We've got um, in Harcourt, there's a, there's a really mad guy who called Slade Beard, who does really interesting system design work for and a lot of defence contracts. He's looking f he was looking for someone from around the Castlemaine, um, Malden, Harcourt, Bendigo area for someone to do a kind of GIS mapping services. Um, and so he was just looking for letters of introduction. 
And he got like four different letters from people within 50 k's of him that he did not know about. Um, in Geelong, since January, we've now got you know, 90 businesses that offer business advisory and accounting services, um, graphic design, architecture, legal, and marketing. So it's, it's become a really powerful tool to be able to find those services. Um, you can either post that need or you can make direct contact, um, go through to their, those businesses' websites. So essentially, we're just trying to shine a light on a particular um, economy and all, all of the awesome businesses that are there. Um, uh, Simone was talking about, or Simone or Simone, sorry, um, was talking about learnings and being in market. So even though we had Pundit Connect and it was imperfect, got an incredible learning. Uh, when we first launched Localized, it was a pretty horrible website, but an incredible opportunity to talk to customers and learn from them. Um, I would not have the insights to be able to iterate on Localized without talking to customers and seeing their problems, um, both digitally and in the real world when it comes to kind of B2B. Uh, and so that, that's helped us shape our product and find our product market fit. Um, we've, we've now got a white label um, kind of economic development tool for councils um, and uh, so some other learnings that we got. Um, basic user design, you know, we all have assumptions about what a good website is. Um, being able to, you know, see where users struggle with your product, really, really valuable. Um, I've had to learn about how businesses go to market. You know, there's really diverse ways how people go to market. Very common stories are word of mouth and, you know, reputation, um, references and, um, Knowing somebody, an entrepreneur in regional economies um, is very exciting. Uh, it can be lonely. Um, so co-working spaces um, are really important. Um, groups like this. You know, Thank you. Really exciting stuff that you're doing. And I love the idea of digital technology connecting smaller communities. We all know we can connect on Google. I love what you're doing. Does, does anybody have any questions for Theo? Ryan. Uh, good, great question. Uh, key failing is your assumptions. So, um, well, the only I think safe assumption is that your assumptions are wrong and that they need to be tested. Um, other failings are that you can't do it alone. So I, I love the concept of pay it forward. It's something that's, I think, really successful in the startup and startup space. So offering your services just out of the goodwill of your heart, um, but also because it will come back to you. Like the, if you can build up a groundswell of entrepreneurs around you and have really strong, powerful, impactful relationships because you've done a service to someone else, um, that will come back to you tenfold. Um, are the failings? Um, never stop. Um, and yeah, keep, keep talking to people. Any other questions? I'm assuming none of those are assumptions either. I know. Um, in, in local governments, that's a different challenge. Um, in a regional community, it's actually really easy. Um, you just got to start going to places like co-working spaces, talking to your library, connecting with the local chamber. Um, and it takes a bit of gumption, takes a bit of um, guts to kind of make phone calls and arrange for coffees, but it does help. Um, getting into government is a different challenge. Um, 
but relationships with, within the business community definitely help. Um, warm introductions go an incredible distance. So if you can um, pay it forward and help a business or help someone from your community, um, they have relationships and so they can yeah, help get you into places you wouldn't think you'd, you'd need to be in. Yeah. Hey. How did having a young family affect your decision to take the big risk on the journey that you're on? Thanks. Um, it was a lifestyle thing. <laughs> I was commuting from Kyneton into Melbourne and it was from 7 in the morning till 7 at night so I wasn't seeing my kids. I was a major driver. Um, that said, now as an entrepreneur, I have total freedom to work any 18 hours of the day I choose. Um, <laughs> so I now choose to work around, you know, being there for my kids in the morning, uh, lunchtime, and uh, in the evenings. Um, also, um, having having a family kind of helps you focus, um, and working for someone else. Um, wasn't really as rewarding as building a business. So. What about the financial, like actually taking that risk and the challenges that go with that? Um, the financial things? Yeah, yeah great question. Um, it, we, we started P uh, Pundit Connect and localised after hours. So we had our families, we had our full-time jobs and we started that business. Um, we then got angel investment, which meant that we could pay ourselves a pretty crappy wage and launch ourselves right into it. So um, there, there is some security in having investment or a runway, um, and it's just a, a big life learning, really. So I don't know where we're going to end up, um, but our, our goalposts are, are very solid. We know where we're, we're trying to get to. Just one very quick question. You said you come from a software engineering and job background, but um, is there a problem looking for people? Do you have to have that knowledge to start it yourself? Or, you know? Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Um, I think my mindset definitely helped. You know, that, that kind of iterative development focus is something that an entrepreneur must have because you'll never, you'll never build the perfect product straight away. And the more time you spend building it, the less time you spend learning because of it. Um, so it helped, but it's, it's like many things, something that can be learned. Um, so agile software development um, helped teach me that, but it's more a kind of a, a learning mindset that experiment and learn from it, fail, learn from it, try, learn from it, um, focus that anyone can do. Thank you.